When you enter the Baltic Sea during winter, you may encounter ice. Are you prepared? Cargo vessels must be able to operate independently for the major part of a voyage through ice. The primary task of icebreakers is to assist vessels through the worst ice conditions. A competent crew will be able to navigate through ice fields and call for icebreaker assistance if needed without delay. Ice maps contain detailed information about prevailing ice conditions. Ice charts are updated daily during the winter season and are published either in black and white or color coded. Specific ice symbols are used for different ice conditions. An ice field at sea is very dynamic. Open water. This is open water that will soon start to freeze. The first stages of freezing are usually in the form of fragile ice, grease ice or slush. Very open ice. The ice coverage is one to three tenths with more open water than ice. Open ice. Floating ice with four to six tenths ice coverage with many leads or fractures in the ice and open water areas. Close ice. Coverage is seven to eight tenths made up of ice flows mostly in contact with each other. New thin ice. A thin, flexible crust of ice easily bending on waves and swell. New ice. A general term for recently formed ice. These types of ice are composed of ice crystals that are only weakly frozen together. Lead or fracture. Any break or rupture through the ice. Leads and fractures should be actively used by ships for faster transit. New ice channel, a passage through sea ice created by an icebreaker or another vessel. Open channel. Old ice channel. Very closed ice channel. Fast ice. Sea ice which forms and remains fast along the coast where it is attached to the shore or between shoals. Level ice, normally found in the archipelagos and close to shore. Rafted ice, ice deformed by one piece of ice overriding another. The surface of a frozen lead will be similar to hummocked ice. Consolidated ice, floating ice with 100% coverage where the ice flows are compacted together. Jammed brash barrier, heavily compacted ice mostly due to wind action that may extend 2 to 20 meters below the sea level. Ice pressure, pressure in the ice field is usually due to wind. The channel is closing rapidly. Broken ice forced up by pressure. The submerged volume of broken ice under a ridge forced downwards by pressure is called an ice keel. Ridges. The submerged volume of broken ice under a ridge forced downwards by pressure can be up to 25 meters deep. Baltic icebreakers typically have a power between 10 and 16 megawatts. The length of icebreakers is about 100 meters and the breadth between 18 and 26 meters. They are equipped with a towing winch and a towing notch. Modern icebreakers have rotating azimuth thrusters for better maneuverability. During a typical winter there are a number of icebreakers operating the Baltic. Finland has eight, Sweden has five, Estonia has one, and Russia has three large liner icebreakers and nine smaller icebreakers. 
Cargo vessels of the top Baltic ice class with new propulsion technology can operate independently. Bigger row row vessels and ferries operating in the Gulf of Finland generally operate independently because they have better ice performance than their ice class requires. Medium sized cargo vessels can operate independently in ice channels and are assisted by icebreakers in harsher ice conditions, such as ridged fields and ice pressure. Bulk carriers and tankers have a lower engine power for their size, and assistance by icebreakers is needed in almost all ice conditions. Cargo vessels operating during the winter in the Baltic area have to be ice strengthened and loaded correctly so that the actual water line is between the low and upper ice water lines. Ice causes loading on the hull when the vessel is breaking ice, when the vessel is turning in channels, and especially if the vessel is in compressive ice fields. As a general rule, ships move better in ice when loaded. Than when in ballast. Insufficient ice strengthening or unskilled operation will cause denting of the hull plating or bending of frames. Hull plating can also be fractured. Bilge keels and other protruding parts can also be damaged, even if they are situated far below the waterline. Damage is most likely in the bow and midship areas. The vessel should be ballasted and trimmed so that the propeller is as deep as possible. The propeller should always be rotating when the ship is moving. In order to protect the steering gear, the rudder must be fitted with mechanical stoppers that prevent the rudder being turned excessively when backing in ice. The rudder must always be in a central position when backing in ice. Bow thrusters should not be used. The engine cooling water intake can easily become blocked if special precautions are not taken. Small ice pieces enter the sea chest, and after some time, the piping will be clogged. The sea chest should be high and have sufficient volume. Some kind of heating is necessary. The system can either be the recirculation of hot water from the engine, steam, or a heating coil in the sea chest. Some vessels can circulate the cooling water through a ballast tank, which is the best way to solve the problem. Restriction policies are the best way to keep traffic moving. The safety of cargo vessels is paramount. Restrictions are based on actual ice conditions and ice thickness. Ships must be able to proceed in ice fields on their own, as far as possible. Traffic restrictions usually begin in December. Typical restrictions in the Bay of Bothnia concern vessels above 2,000 deadweight tonnage in ice class 1 or 2. Typical restrictions in March, usually the most severe ice conditions, are 4,000 deadweight tons ice class 1A in the Bay of Bothnia and 2,000 deadweight tons ice class 1A or 1B in the Gulf of Bothnia and the Gulf of Finland. Restrictions end in early June. Typical midwinter Estonian restrictions are ice class 1C with propulsion power more than 2,000 kilowatts, and typical midwinter Russian restrictions are ice class LU1 or LU2 with more than 2,000 horsepower. Low temperatures and seawater spray cause ice formation on deck. On small vessels, this can cause a dangerous loss of stability. Icing can be avoided by reducing speed and changing the heading. Fire lines should be fitted with suitable drainage points to prevent freezing. All pipes should be empty of water and valves open. Low temperatures will affect deck piping systems. This is especially a worry for tankers. Thermal contraction of the line should also be considered. Ice formation in ballast tanks can be...